Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we're going to talk about champions where I would consider building two. This becomes more like a mid to, uh, to end game type of setup, really. And, and I get asked this a ton in streams, in, in kind of video messages. People say to me, if you had two of this champion, would you build them out? This is my full list of people that I would and have built out. Before we get onto it, I just want to give a quick update. Twitter rush is going on with Raid Shadow Legends. Um, if you follow them on Twitter, we, we're getting free stuff. All of us are getting free stuff if people are following on Twitter. I'm doing a giveaway on my Twitter as well. If I get to 10,000 followers, I'm giving away a Brucey bonus. Big old pack of uh, gems, a pile of gems. Can I get there, Dane? Let me get there. I'm going to give away the big pile of gems to one of those followers as soon as we've done it. I'm going to buy this for someone. I'll probably just buy them like a, a raid card or something or a Google card to be able to buy it. $89.99. You're welcome. And then we're also doing a I Love Free Stuff push at the same time on hellhades.com. So go into I Love, uh, sorry, hellhades.com. Click on the link here and you can see opportunities to win a free uh, takeover, a fr uh, three free, uh, my, my tongue doesn't like saying that, account coaching sessions one-on-one, um, -on -one, and then a merch piece as well. So you can kind of see how you get involved in this stuff. But it's all up for grabs for the next two weeks. So get involved. So, and this is a result of it. This is the first of the freebies for signing up to the Raid Twitter. And I've got it here in the shop somewhere. Community gift, claim free gift. On the free to play, this is actually pretty damn nice because we're gonna. I'm going to be able to just hold it here. 99 days of free energy pots some silver i might as well just grab the silver now but the xp boost i'm going to leave in here the energy pots i'll leave in here that will help me for a future fragment event or event that i want to try and get through right then let's talk about dupe champions should you build them when should you build them how should you build them all of that good stuff i guess because we've now got guardian ring in the game dupe epics can be just held yeah you can hold them it's going to boost all of the other epics in your team in terms of stats that's something that you should do like that just feels like that's a sensible thing to do you might as well boost all of your factions stats across the board if you can um, it's just going to help you get through content more stats it makes it just easier to get through content so bear that in mind but for this video it's like who should i build out with with the objective of actually getting further through the game helping you into the end game all of that good stuff and you will get dupes along the way a lot of them nowadays, honestly, are just food. We used to recommend, like, keep a, a dupe copy of everybody in the vault in case a fusion needs it. They don't ever do this anymore. Okay, I can't stress that enough. Dupes pretty much become food um, or books. Yeah, the, the, the need for them to be a, a fusible champion in the future, it's just gone away. They never, ever do it anymore. Obviously, don't hold me. To, they might change it again. They could change it again. But I doubt that they will. So let's get into it. Champions that I would build dupes of. There's not a single banner lord that I felt like was worthy of adding to this list, by the way. I'm not saying there's not great champions. I'm just saying, like, would I personally build any of these as a dupe? No, I would not. I don't feel like it's a, a requirement to. Let's talk about high elves then. The first high elf which I would build as a dupe, and this is mainly arena focus because of free versus free arena. Yeah. Arbiter is a great speed lead, a great champion to have in your arena teams. So for free versus free, it's worth building a second Arbiter if you've got one. And for um, a different style of arena setup. So my kind of situation with Arbiter is I've got my main Arbiter just kind of like in a fast build. And she is, um, yeah, just kind of running, running my kind of standard type of team. But then I hold a second one, which I will use as an immunity arbiter. So if I'm building a team which is like full immunity to go up against like Tormans or Hedges or that sort of style, then my immunity arbiter would come out for that sort of setup. The other champion in High Elves here is Royal Guard. And the requirement for this one is actually really different. So Royal Guard, having two of them is actually huge. His AoE smack can definitely be used in multiple situations. As you're coming up through the game, two Royal Guards can actually be used to start to build speed teams when you're going through, you know, stages 17 to 20 in most dungeons. One of the best champions to do it, you know, up to stage 20 Spider, uh, stage 20 Dragon, um, 
even stuff like Ice Golem, there are speed teams out there with double Royal Guards and a reset champion like a Renegade or a Kaimar alongside them. When you're talking about moving further up into like um, Dungeons 25, you can still use Royal Guards against Fire Knight 25, actually a really strong champion in that setup. And you can also um, start to then twist your Royal Guards to be Hydra champions. And again, because you need enough champions to deal with potentially three fights in Hydra, Dupe Royal Guards become super strong. He's a great champion anyway, uh, with his AoE smack on his A2. But he's also good for when you get to kind of Hydra and, and Fire Knight late level. This decreased speed and multi-hitter on his A3 is also really strong, plus his decreased defense. So Royal Guard is definitely up there as one of the, the, like, the best champions to build dupes on. Okay, let's move on to Sacred Order then. First one I picked out here was Astralon. And you're probably like, really? Why? This dude is actually really useful to have in a late game spider build. So like a, a spider 25, his control ability is really strong. So 100% stun ability, and then you get some kind of nukage or burnage going on around it is really strong. But you can't build him to do max damage like you would in an arena build. You actually need him in, in an ability or in a build which is going to just enable the stuns and enable him to run at the right speed. Therefore, you, you probably would use a second one in an arena build if you wanted to. So a little bit of a niche one, but I figured I'd throw it out there because some people will need that kind of 100% stun type of Astralon. I've called out Cardiel here as well. It's unlikely people get dupes of some of these champions, but I'm going to call them out if I see them. This dude is a freaking beast. Yeah, and the build you would use in, say, an arena defense team versus a Hydra offensive team is very different. And so you either switch gear around as you start to, and, and you know, switch builds around as you move them, or if you've got a dupe, it's kind of worthy to build a dupe and, you know, specialize each build to the content you're trying to beat. I've put Mordecai in the mix here as well, mainly for Hydra. He's one of the better burners for Hydra and, and burning is great against Hydra. So, you know, you might use him in the Spider 20 build. If you're going Hydra, you might want to go higher resistance or like regen build or something like that. So the builds become very different depending on where you're using this champion. He's not like an essential, definitely build two if you've got two type of thing, but I thought I'd throw him in the mix whilst we're doing this type of vid. Okay, let's move on. Um, in terms of Barbarians, there wasn't a single champion. I mean, you could argue to Hanarak if you had her dupes, then she's one of the best Hydra champions around. So you could argue that. But I didn't feel like any of them, certainly not Woad, were worth building uh, dupes of. Ogden Tribesen. Again, no legendaries here. Unless you're doing something very quirky and fun with War Mother. And, and there's going to be niche stuff like that, by the way. This video is more about the main streamers yeah the, the first one for me here is ugo and this has really come about because she is just so damn strong against hydra you, it's worth having her in two of your hydra teams this aoe decreased defense and block buffs is such a great ability she can also be just like straight up solid for arena and general dungeon running and again the builds that you would use her in would mix depending on what you're doing so you know hydra it's very much, I would go higher resistance with good accuracy, very um, tank-like build. Whereas if I was building it for arena, I'd go way more offensive. So it depends how you're using it, but definitely worthy of a double up. The other one in here is probably an obvious one, Man-Eater. When you've got two Man-Eaters, Clan Boss becomes a joke. Uh, and therefore having two and building them both out and booking their A3s is kind of essential to do that. There's more options now. There didn't used to really be more options than this. You know, the Mytha who we cover later is an option, but Maneater is uh, absolutely top draw and worthy of two. Okay, moving on. Lizards. Draco. I would build and have built Dupe Dracos. Mainly because Draco can just kind of be used anywhere. Now, level 21 to 25 and uh, higher endgame stuff being less susceptible to poison has definitely diminished draco's ability to be the hard carry everywhere and he used to be honestly he used to be an absolute hard carry but he's still extremely good in some of the doom tower bosses and for dungeon running 
uh, and the builds generally are quite different. Also, you can run him really effectively as a damage dealer stroke debuffer in clan boss. And again, that build would be pretty damn different from a dungeon running Draco. So well worthy of building two if you've got two. Crisk as well, just because, I mean, what a freaking beast. The reason why I would say about two Crisks, mainly Hydra, or you can run double Crisk in clan boss and get to all sorts of shenanigans going on. Um, you might build a defense arena style Crisk and then a, a PVE Crisk. So he's absolutely so diverse. His abilities are so diverse that you can just use him anywhere in the game. But you do need to build him specific to what you want. Like my Crisk for Clan Boss in my current team, which kind of gets me to, you know, hundreds of million of damage on Clan Boss, would not do me very well in Hydra. So, and I actually kind of want him in my Hydra team. So I'm having to re-gear him every time I want to run him in Hydra um, into more like a resistance build with higher HP and a bit more speed. So it's definitely something to consider if you've managed to pull two. Nothing else in here felt like it was worthy of a men. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, nothing else in there. Next one up was too missy for me in the Stinwalkers, mainly because of Hydra and Spider. She's an absolute beast in those areas. You will see similarities here. Like Hydra's kind of one of those spots now that if they're really good there, then multiple champions are worthy. But Tumisia, I mean, what a fun champion this is. I underestimated Tumisia until I got her, and then I was like, damn, way stronger than I thought. Extremely strong in Hydra and part of my uh, Spider 25, like. 10 second team or whatever i did call out taurus here as well or i'm going to call out taurus here the only reason i would build two and i wouldn't even take them to 60 by the way i would just give them gear is if i was running poison exploder teams taurus does one of the best poison layouts in the game throwing out four on all enemies so if you've got two you'll be throwing out eight on all enemies a xavier or an eleanor or comes over the top wipes all those off and does a ton of damage one of the best ways to wave clear in the game so taurus only for that reason and as i say all you need on him is the right speed and some accuracy to land his stuff and a bit of a little bit of defensive stats i run mine at 50 no problem when i was doing this strat so it's not like you need six star masteries all that but two of them can be useful together let's move on to the orcs i mean this dude, Warlord, is by far the best arena champion in the game. I guess Yumiko is now his, his partner in crime. But basically, this dude for me is still the best. He is used in near enough every plat level arena offense. He counters stone skin. He counters reaction gear. He counters uh, everybody in the game. He's just like absolutely nuts because of his A3 lockout ability so you will just see him time and again and you know some people will build him very high accuracy fast a bit like my warlord other build him others build him like higher resistance and fast so that he can't be uh, locked out himself it's just there's, there's a number of ways you can use him but he is uh absolutely freaking nuts so warlord mainly for arena so demons then first one then again this is mainly for an arena thing but actually this is I own four Kaimars, very, very lucky. But Prince Kaimar, he's the only champion where I've got three built out and I use them all in different ways. So double Kaimar enables you to do some silly stuff in Doom Tower waves, doing like resets of Sears nuke or anyone's nuke. Like if you're if you're trying to do poison exploder nukes, it's the same job. But double Kaimar will get you through Doom Tower waves like you wouldn't believe. Um Kaimar is also actually really good in Hydra. He's one of the best arena champions. He's one of the best champions to do speed running in all dungeons. Like this guy's probably top of the list for would build more if I had more. I'm very fortunate I do have more than one of this dude. Duchess is maybe second on the list. <laughs> so Duchess is probably the best arena defense champion in the game. A lot of that's to do with her passive here and a full team revive she's also one of the best champions for hydra in the game now if you're thinking about trying to deal with the head of torment trying to revive your team when you're taking damage think about the amount of aoe damage that you take and she's got a passive that just nullifies some of that damage you know building out two duchesses for two teams in hydra is huge 
building out two duchesses for arena is huge as well so this is definitely a champion that's that could be in the mix i use my duchess as well in high level doom tower stuff on pretty much anything where i'm like i'm struggling to beat this i throw a duchess in and it makes it way easier so yeah duchess definitely worthy of a dupe uh build i put a law in the list here i don't know if i if i totally back it honestly she absolutely is needed for fire knight 21 to 25 to get 100 percent teams she's all i don't need it's a harsh word but she's like up there as the most important element of a team and she's also really good in Doom Tower stuff, but you don't need her as fast, but you actually need a lot more accuracy in Doom Tower stuff. So, you know, you might use her for Dark Fae, for example. The build you would use in Dark Fae would be very different to the build you would use in, in Fire Knight. So I put her in the list, but probably less worthy than others in the mix. Let's jump to the Undead Send. Next one I've got here is Rotus. If you haven't heard of a Seafy Double Rotus team, then go and look it up doesn't really lose in the arena as an offensive team rotus with Seafy just gets all of his debuffs wiped away rotus with Seafy just just is chaotic it's like it's incredibly difficult to beat it's a bit slower than like a normal nuke build but it's incredibly difficult to beat so he's got to be in the mix for that and that same combo uh, is also just generally good in pretty much like most high level content albeit it's slow it will get you through i've added here as well michold so michold is amazing for hydra he's also amazing for some uh, clan boss builds where you're trying to go on a two for one speed he brings you a brilliant a2 with a speed buff and, and leeches and stuff so there's absolutely a good case that you might use him in normal clan boss and hydra clan boss also you might use him in some arena based content and the builds for those different type of things are all different so definitely could be worthy of two if you're struggling with any of that sort of content we just grab my list um who we got next yeah seeker seeker similar sort of thing to michelle actually can be used in arena as a really good arena defense champion because of his passive but also is one of the best champions to get you moving in clan boss so for that reason i think a lot of people would build two out if they had two for those two different areas uh in the same faction here we've got husk husk mainly for hydra not really outside of hydra i wouldn't say you need two husks if you've got two and you're struggling for damage dealers you know on two separate hydra teams or maybe you want to double damage one hydra team with the right type of affinities husk becomes the best champion in the game for that so um like the last rotation rotation five he was way better than royal guard so it kind of depends what we're up against in terms of the Hydra setup. I put Vogloff on the list as well. Probably the best tank in the game. Awesome, awesome arena defense champion. Uh, and that build is very different to if you were to use him in kind of like Doom Tower waves or, or something like a, a, a Bommel build or something like that. So again, a little bit of a niche one for a, a dupe build, but probably worth building a dupe if you're getting towards that end game content. Okay then, let's move on to Night Revs. Sorry, Dark Elves. Let's move on to Dark Elves. I've put Madame on the list here. Probably less so than she used to be, honestly. She used to be a must for arena offense because of this A3. The clean off, replace it with decreased defense and attack. It's actually a, a huge ability. There's now others that kind of do it well. Rian, uh, if you've got... Um, Champions like Kaima. Kaima have kind of replaced Madame in terms of that clean off now, and people just blow up their enemies uh, without the decreased defense. So, not as kind of important as it was. But again, I used to run a normal Madame, high speed, high accuracy, and then I had an immunity Madame to go into that immunity arbiter team. So, kind of depends what you're running. Less, less important than it used to be, but still worthy of a dupe build for a lot of people, especially for like 3v3 arena and stuff like that. Uh, cold hearts like the first rare on the list i think and i think the only rare on the list i still use multiple cold hearts as as an end game player with almost all legendaries and lots of dupe legendaries i still use uh two cold hearts so she's just so good for spider anything spider 25 she's insane spider 20 she's insane finite uh up to 20 she's insane loads of doom tower stuff she's insane the builds are actually pretty damn similar 
It's not like I need different builds, but she's just so good that I actually put two in the team, mainly for her A3, uh, plus her quad hit in A4, uh, sorry, A1. So yeah, Cold Heart, absolutely freaking awesome as well. I did put on the list here, um, I did put on my list Soul Drinker, mainly for if you've got a Gaius. If you just pulled Gaius and you've got two Soul Drinkers, you can actually just get them to blow up whole arena teams if you build them right without, uh, without doing anything. Like it's, it's almost like a foolproof death to all enemies. Build them high attack and watch people die, basically. So I need a second Soul Drinker to get this working. I've done it with one, and I can't quite finish off my enemies. But this is going to be, unless they fix something somehow, it's going to be some sort of dirty arena meta for a while for offense. Double Soul Drinker. So bear that one in mind. Okay, on to the Night Revs then. First one on the list. This is probably like one of the most end game champions to have a double of, a dupe of. Calvalax gets us, double Calvalax gets us some of the fastest ever Dragon 25, Ice Golem 25. Uh, teams in the game and and there's probably more to come out of this dude as well so you know he's passive just throwing out loads of poisons also works really well with those poison exploders again with this guy it's not really you want different builds it's just you want two of him to get those things to work because then you get the passive with eight poisons you get absolute nukes with his a3 and you get a lot of damage out of his a1 and a2 as well so calvalax absolutely worthy of dupes hedgy I think is also worthy of dupes if you manage if you're lucky to pull two um mainly because hedgy is so versatile in the way you would use him you can either go full nuke hedgy and surprise people or you can go full control hedgy like stun set taunt set and uh give them a tickle but tons of uh control and then just let the rest of your damage dealers do their work but yeah hedgy because you want to give people kind of like a yeah, almost, almost like you, you just want people to not know what's coming at them. Two is always going to be better than one. Let's get on to the dwarves then. Got a couple in here. So Trunda, best damage dealer in the game for Arena for sure. Uh, also really strong in Hydra for some of the rotations. And that's where I'm thinking two comes in. Well, actually, that's where I'm thinking multiple come in. Your Trunda build for the Arena, you can have a normal full damage like Savage or... A lethal type of build or you can go immunity trunda again to get into one of those immunity style teams so that's kind of like two potential builds there and then hydra generally you need more stats more health more survivability uh still with decent damage for a hydra build so that would be different again rogni one of the best like all-round legendaries in the game but yeah you could you could run a clan boss brogni which i do right now and that build would be very different from a Doom Tower Brogni where I'd want a lot more accuracy and survivability um, and for the sake of perhaps a bit of damage. So definitely worthy of a dupe build here. Next one I've got is probably a top three to build out, honestly, in the game. So yeah, so this dude probably like a top three worthy of building a dupe in my opinion. Like he's up there with the other kind of top epics that I spoke about earlier, mainly for his versatility. He is one of the better champions for Doom Tower bosses. He's awesome in Hydra. He's awesome in Clan boss. Uh, he's awesome in Spider, like late game. So depending on what you want him for, but certainly I would use two in different Hydra teams uh, or in like a Clan boss setup. So well worthy of going on. Uh, I've got Demitha here, mainly similar for, for Man Eater. You might run a double Demitha. A clan boss setup that's the main reason or you might run a demitha in a clan boss team and then also a demitha in a um like a bommel team or a hydra team potentially so probably worthy of a dupe if you need uh but mainly like a clan boss sort of setup and then the last one then that i'm calling out and do comment below if you've got different views different ideas around who you have used dupes for and, and where you've used them but I've called out Lady Kimmy here, absolutely like top draw arena champion, but also extremely strong in Doom Tower waves and in Hydra. And the builds just end up being quite different. So you know, arena, you might be using her as a very high accuracy 
speed champion, a bit like a Kaimar style build. Whereas in Hydra, you wouldn't need anywhere near the, the same level of accuracy and you might have more of a tankier build. So it just depends how you're using her and the masteries would be totally different as well in that sort of you know, differential. And that tends to be where it is. You know, if you look at all the champions I've spoken about, most of them, it's either um, you would use like a different mastery setup and different build for the different content or actually they just worked well together with themselves. So they are my list. Hopefully that will help people now that are thinking, should I keep two? Should I build two for future? But don't forget about that faction guardian bonus. Don't just kind of get rid of the rest of your champions because all of these extra stats, a bit like the Great Hall, they really help you to get through content. Anyway, guys, I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.